Hello, this video is a question for Dr. Michael Hassel, who is listed here as a leader of the GYC. The GYC says here it can articulate and defend the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So here is the question. Why does the Seventh-day Adventist Church support abortion by claiming that killing children is a religious freedom? Where is the biblical evidence to support that? According to the official journals of the Adventist Church, it is a documented fact that abortion was accepted in 1970-1971 for the purpose of making money, but because church leaders knew that lay members would not accept this, they purposely kept this a secret for over 15 years. Later in the 1980s, Catholics and evangelicals began protesting the Adventist support for abortion on demand, and when these secrets were exposed in the international news in the Washington Post, church leaders in North America became creative and began claiming that killing children was a religious act and therefore should be protected as a religious freedom. So strong is this belief that Adventist church leadership at the GC appealed to the Supreme Court of the United United States in the case of Webster versus Reproductive Health Services in order to block any restrictions on abortion. It is a matter of public record that the Adventist Church publicly argued that any attempt to protect children from violence was religious dogma. The glaring problem, however, is that no Adventist Church leader has ever produced any evidence why it is murder to kill a child one minute after it is born, but it is an act of religious worship to kill a child one minute before it is born. Since the GYC publicly boasts that you can defend the church's teachings, please produce the scripture why this is so. Furthermore, the official books published by the GC, what Adventists believe and the official dictionaries of the church all claim that the living unborn child is not a living human being. It's printed right here. A new soul comes into existence whenever a child is born. The Adventist Church officially and publicly contradicts both established medical science and the scriptures. The authors of the Bible in both the Old and New Testaments all consistently defined the unborn as babies, as sons, brothers, and as living human children with the exact same words used for born children. The angel Gabriel said that John the Baptist was a son from conception. Since the GYC claims that we should respect scripture as the foundation of all teachings, would you please defend the Adventist Church's claim that the unborn are not living human beings? How can you defend both the Scripture and the Church when they openly contradict each other? This is a legitimate question. The claim that the unborn are not human is the basis for the ideology used to justify the murder of over 40 to 50 million children every year. How can you at the GYC expect anyone to take the Adventist message seriously when the church denies the humanity of a whole class of human beings? How in the world can leaders in the GYC so stridently preach against evolution taught in our schools when your own church claims that the unborn children are not even alive? Furthermore, when Adventist institutions openly honor and celebrate the most notorious abortionist who boasted of killing over 250,000 children, the GYC GYC says nothing. Not only did Dr. Allred claim to have killed more than one quarter of a million children, but he boasted of specifically targeting black and Hispanic children for violence. This man has been openly honored for years in Adventist institutions as the example forever for Adventist youth. His career of murdering children for money is listed as the inspiration. The church's flagship medical center and university openly honors Allred as a distinguished ambassador for the healing ministry of Christ. Christians in other denominations were horrified to see this, and when the Adventist Church was blasted for this hypocrisy, not one, not even one leader in the GYC spoke against this. We are told by leaders in the GYC that the Adventist Church is the apple of God's eye, and we must be very careful to preserve and protect its reputation. But when people 
who murder children are boldly and proudly honored before the world and when this church is blasted repeatedly in international news for our hypocrisy, the GYC says nothing. Your own president, Andrew Park, without any evidence whatsoever, published claims of racism on your official GYC website. But when there is plenty of evidence of targeting minority children for actual violent murder, he says nothing. Why is that? When I contacted Mr. Park about his claims and lack of evidence, suddenly the article disappeared from your site. This same abortionist at the height of his career butchering children was honored at the 1990 General Conference in session because he gave so much money. Blood money from Judas is bad, but blood money from Allred gets honored by our leaders at the GC in session. How does that work? If the GYC has no problem issuing public statements about the sexual misconduct of Samuel Pippin, why are you so silent when people in our church openly and publicly honor abortionists who kill children? This man boasted of killing over 100 little boys and girls every seventh day Sabbath. And this man is listed as the ambassador, inspiration, and example. And you say nothing. As one of your own leaders stated, the biggest threat to ministry is hypocrisy. Furthermore, the current president, Ted Wilson, on multiple different occasions publicly claimed that killing children is a matter of conscience, a religious freedom to be respected, since you have been a leader in the GYC who boasts of being able to defend the church, then please explain to all of the Adventist youth why rape and slavery are not a matter of conscience, but killing children is. This is a big problem because Adventist pioneers unanimously condemned abortion as infanticide and as child murder, as an enormous and appalling evil, and they even supported anti-abortion legislation. If according to Ted Wilson, killing children is a religious freedom, then why were the Adventist pioneers publicly supporting legislation restricting this religious liberty? And speaking of the pioneers, GYC leaders like right here really love to boast that our pioneers were all staunch abolitionists. But when they were staunchly against abortion, we don't hear even one word. Why is that? And what's worse, the Adventist official position on euthanasia states right here in black and white that it's wrong to intentionally kill someone who is sick and dying. But even though this is our explicit teaching, your GYC president stood there at the annual council and gave her, quote, extremely enthusiastic support for a position that supports killing sick or dying children. You can literally listen to her on camera endorse the loophole that the GC Health Ministries claimed right here justifies killing children for mental health, the exact same language used to allow abortion on demand. This is outrageous. Several years ago, one of your best known speakers at the GYC said this. Sends his executioner away. And he goes and carries out that morbid, fickle, ridiculous errand because he was a coward. Because he cared more about what people thought than what God thought. So King Herod gets publicly condemned by the GYC as a coward because of the killing of one innocent man. But today, when the Adventist church has justified the genocide of 50 million children every year as a religious freedom, the GYC says nothing. When the most notorious abortionist is honored, the GYC says nothing. The GYC is quick to condemn the Canaanites, quick to condemn Judas, quick to condemn Herod, loudly and publicly call them cowards. But when murderers are named as ambassadors for the healing ministry of Christ, you say nothing. How in the world can you lecture youth about standing for the right, even though the heavens fall, when the GYC won't even stand up for the sixth commandment? The leaders of the GYC are not stupid. You are very intelligent, and you know, and I know, and everybody knows that there are leaders in our church who are intent on keeping this abomination within this church, and they know that they can continue to punk and to bully the church. They know that they can get away with it as long as nobody stands up to tell the truth. 
And that's why I'm sending this video to you. Because number one, you are a man. And number two, because you've been a leader in the GYC. I am not asking the women. I want to be very clear. I'm not asking the women in the GYC. I'm asking the men in the GYC. For years and years, the GYC has lectured everyone that the greatest want of the world are men. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. And considering the horrific and violent nature of this sin within our own church, we need men with a backbone who will stand up and speak the truth. And I am hoping that you are that kind of man. But if there are no men in GYC leadership, then please let me know so that I can go ask the women. Thank you.